All right, all right. Welcome to the GMB show. Uh, as you notice, there are more of us here than usual. Um, and, <laughs> and one of us is immature. All right, so we've got Ryan and Amos here from uh, Apex Movement, uh, parkour athletes. They've got a great gym where they teach people, and they do a lot of other stuff that's really cool. We're going to talk about them and what they do and why it's important in a little bit. But before we get started, I think it's important to address that we now have two people named Ryan on here. So for the duration of this show, my partner, uh, Dr. Ryan Hurst, shall be known as uh, Beef Supreme. Oh, yes. So hopefully you guys have seen Idiocracy, and uh, Mr. Supreme and I will be uh, grilling you for the next 20 minutes plus or minus, maybe probably more plus. Uh, so you guys want to go on and kind of introduce yourselves in a little bit about uh, what you do? Yeah. Um, I'm Ryan. This is Amos here. And we're with Apex Movement. We do parkour and just move in general. Um, I've been doing it for about 11 years. And um, luckily, well, I've been lucky enough to do it professionally for about five or six now. So I've done performances and stuff all over the world. Um, I'm pretty well known for like YouTube videos, posting up little drills and exercises and stuff like that, some articles and whatnot. Um, we have five gyms. We're both located here in Boulder. Apex Movement Boulder is like our flagship gym. Um, but yeah, that's a little bit about me. I'll let Amos go. Uh, yeah, I work with Ryan uh, for Apex Movement and we're about to launch Parkour EDU soon. Uh, as well, I also have two projects. One's called Parkour Ukimi, where I study falling in regards to movement and also Parkour Rondori, where uh, I'm very interested in applying parkour to real life emergency situations. Yeah, so obviously, uh, You've probably seen videos of these guys if you've looked at any parkour videos. Uh, I mean, that's how I found out about both of you guys. And uh, I, Ryan is, is lit up now because you, you've said the words Ukimi and Randori. So <laughs> you want to roll with that, Ryan? Wait, yeah, Ryan? this is great. So um, Beef Supreme here talking. So, uh, yeah. Oh, sorry, Beef. Mi Mr. Supreme, I apologize. I already screwed up. <laughs> No, this is great for the for uh, for you too. If you didn't know, I live in Japan. I've been here for about twenty years, and so uh, my background is martial art, things like that, and so rolls, and falling, and also helping other people fall on the floor is kind of my thing. So uh, I love your Kimmy series. Uh, your videos are just so awesome because you just have fun with it, and the and of course the details are just exquisite uh, in you know in depth stuff. But I just love the fact that you have fun with what you're doing. It's not just one of those dry. We're now going to talk about Kimmy or something like that. So uh, anyway, yeah, I just, you guys, what you're doing, it's great. And then Ryan, you know, even this morning I was checking out, uh, I think you just posted it today, the quad jump. Yeah. Um, yeah, man, the stuff that you guys are putting out is great. So just, yeah, keep doing what you're doing and uh, we'll just interview in the interview right there. So thanks for <laughs> Cool. Yeah, so, no, I think both of us kind of took that approach to offer more details, more knowledge, more um, methods to what we're doing because in parkour it kind of lacked that. Yeah. And when I started like 11 years ago in Colorado, I could find literally nobody to learn from. So I was kind of on my own and that's how Apex basically started is I naturally found myself in a leadership position where people started asking us for help and it just kind of slowly grew from there. And um, we tried to step in and just offer a little bit more structure um, you know, we're not trying to make it like super rigid and traditional or anything, but offering more structure so people don't get hurt and so people can not make the same mistakes I did. Like, for example, I thought in order to learn how to roll back when I started, I was jumping off the 10 foot tip top of the playground. And obviously nowadays we're going to teach somebody down on the ground. So and when I started, actually, he was the only person teaching maybe in the Western Hemisphere. And so, you know, clearly I needed to kind of trailblaze my own path because he didn't know what he was doing. <laughs> so, but I, it was kind of cool actually because it was very complimentary and a lot of my interests with uh, falling and a lot of my movement interests in general were complimentary to his style of strength training, which I didn't get into as much. So I think that's very cool is uh, that you guys have sort of different backgrounds that complement each other, which is also sort of how we came up with GMB too. The three of us, uh, our other partner, Jarlo, we have 
different things that kind of uh, we help each other out with. Um, and also I thought it was really interesting uh, that you just mentioned. So Ryan's got more strength training background and Amos, you more, what, how do you have a falling background? Where does that come from? Martial arts, I'm okay. also playing to dance. Uh, I played soccer when I was younger, I played goalie. So I was kind of natural at falling to that. Um, yeah, mostly martial arts though. Cool, very cool. Um, so before we go too much into any more details, I think one of the things that probably most people want to hear about parkour is they have, of course, and I'm sure you guys have confronted this a billion times, the image of people like jumping off bridges and doing stupid things and they think I'm going to die. And obviously you guys are already talking about teaching in a safer, more structured manner that is you know, designed for that not to be the case. But why don't you tell us a little bit, I'm sure you've probably got it memorized this speech about why parkour is actually useful and beneficial and important for people that are not going to be jumping off of bridges and buildings. Yeah, we've actually, that's been our eternal struggle from day one. Right. It's just educating our communities that, you know, kind of drawing this line between jackass stunts and us. Uh, because unfortunately for a lot of outside, outside observers, uh, they see a continuum there. And so a lot of what we do with uh, various marketing or just the way we act in public with people is uh, letting them, just drawing that definitive line um, in education. And we've seen that, that go a long way in Boulder. Now we're kind of like local heroes to a lot of people. People really respect what we do. They don't give us a lot of problems, but that took years of, uh, you know, flyers, speaking with people, being respectful of landowner, landowners and police. Um, but uh, yeah, do you, yeah, how do you go about that? I mean, I think we definitely see it as more of a lifestyle than like any kind of jackass like hobby or anything like that. Honestly, I don't even really think parkour needs a title. It's just something that we all inherently did as little kids. And what we're doing is just adding a little bit more focus and direction and um, just elaborating on it in general. So I think everybody did parkour. Um, it's just a matter of when did you stop? And yeah. if you didn't stop, how far did you take it? So climbing trees and scrambling up boulder fields, rock climbing. Um, you know, parkour has a little bit of influence in many different things, dance, martial arts, track and field, all kinds of stuff. So It's funny, I was joking with Ryan a few days ago, like when I was a kid, parkour was called get off the roof before you break your neck, <laughs> yeah. you know? And, you know, I unfortunately stopped a lot of stuff, but started, you know, practicing more when I was, when, after I was an adult, you know, and rediscovering how much fun it is to just explore and play. And um, it's actually kind of funny because I realized earlier today without even thinking about it, I actually used like that much parkour. There was a, there was a little rail between the Starbucks and the Office Depot. <laughs> and instead of walk all the way around the handicap ramp, I just kind of vaulted it. I was like... Yeah, yeah, you know, I, I saved a, a precious just 30 seconds, you know, but it was like one of those things I had practiced it and I knew I could do it safely. I know I could get over and it's just, you have that confidence and you have that little that ability. And so why not use it? You know? Yeah, honestly, that's probably one of our biggest messages is that you don't have to try to be the next parkour all star doing like double backflips and roof gaps and stuff. You just have to stay moving, whether it's doing what you guys do or doing um, what we do, even though it's pretty similar, or doing like dance or martial arts or something, like mm -hmm. keep moving, stay mobile, stay strong. Um, also, don't you know walk down the sidewalk with your head down, staring at your phone all the time. Like take the time to look around a little bit. We've actually been on rooftops before, and I kid you not, the only people that ever notice that you're up there are little kids. Everyone else is like yeah. eyes glued down to their screens, and you know we just kind of have that child childlike mentality of seeing the world a little bit differently. I also like what you said about, I mean, I think you guys are hinting at it. You guys are becoming more like leaders in your community and so role models of sorts, right? And so I know it's taken a lot of time, but I think it's interesting, especially looking at your videos that, I mean, you do have fun, but you guys aren't cocks, basically. You're not being so <laughs> cocky that you're like, yeah, it's all about me and everything like that. And I love, especially the video recently where you show I forgot the title, I apologize, but basically it's uh, you guys had a huge event in in the gym and you start off by jumping through the window and then you jump onto the pole and uh, yeah, you do that anywhere. But, but what I'm just saying is just there were so many people in there and you could tell that these people really look up to you too and they really respect you. And I think to me that was huge because it wasn't just like somebody 
like I'm not bagging on skaters or anything like that, but sometimes you get these skaters and you're just like, God, have some respect for what you're doing, you know, and, and look at you guys and what you're doing and you can just tell that the people that are around you and the people that you're working with, there's just mutual respect and I think that's really, really cool uh, what we're seeing there. Yeah, it almost comes with the art. Um, you have to have an underlying respect for your body and for this art because if you, if you don't, through like natural selection, you just get weeded out. And so I think a lot of practitioners that are that have healthy bodies and are doing amazing things with them, um, it's come from years of learning how to have a deep respect because some of the stuff we do at Heights, it only takes a flash of a second to, uh, to mess around and not be focused and you can be seriously injured. Sure. So almost like through natural selection, a lot of our community just has this deep respect. So let's talk a little bit about community because I think that's one of the good things that uh, you guys obviously uh, exhibit with your events and your gym. And in, in any of the, the people that I've really met that have practiced parkour a lot, they usually practice with a group of people and there's, there's definitely a sense of community, uh, which I think tends to be lacking a lot in a lot of physical training, you know? Yeah, yeah, I think that's huge for what we do and definitely through the gym and through all the weekly jams and monthly jams that we have here around town, the idea is to promote community. Yeah, I think it's probably the most important thing to me um, and I really love the parkour community just because, which is hard to draw lines around because there's so much intersection with other arts, but um, they're just, every community has its bad apples. Parkour, it's very rare to have bad apples. Mm. There's so many people that are so down to earth, very intelligent. Um, I'm not sure what it is about the art yet, but um, you know we could talk about that for a while too as well. We can get sidetracked, but there's there's a lot of stuff that brings these type of people, just really strong individuals, um, and I really appreciate that. And that's important. Like a lot of us, who cares? You know, some people get lost in maybe the fame or trying to do the best trick out there, um, but none of that matters in the end. Like who cares if you landed a triple something? Um, it's the it's the people you're training with and the experience you have. That that journey. Very cool. So. Cool. So the other thing is, you know, I, one of my theories about kind of why community, one of the reasons that community probably becomes really important in parkour also goes back to, like you said earlier about mindfulness is that, you know, when you are, you know, running and throwing your body like in the air, right. Or up against a wall or something, you know, you have to be aware of what's going on in every second. And you also, you have to help each other be aware of, of things happening as well. And so we also obviously try to teach that kind of mindfulness in, in movements that maybe aren't as dynamic, right? But it's also getting at that uh, awareness of yourself and what's happening. And I think that that's, uh, you know, that's, a, that's a feature that I always enjoyed the few times that I've really practiced any parkour at all. Yeah, I think it reminds it, me of martial arts actually, Yeah, you know? Yeah, it totally puts you in touch with everything that you're capable of, how to use your body and everything. but. I think the, the second layer on that, which makes parkour really interesting to a lot of people, is also the interaction with the environment. So you're not only becoming more aware of yourself, but everything around you and everything you interact with. And I think that's one reason parkour has been so um, enjoyed on YouTube and in the movies and stuff, is because sometimes it's not even what that person is doing that makes it cool. It's just like, where are they doing it? Or how are they acting with the environment? So, and actually, uh, the, the video you talked about, the, the course running video with all the people watching, that's like another level of that is to be able to still have that awareness under pressure and, and yeah. the chaos. That is, um, you know, a lot of people watching you, you only get one shot at a course and you're on the clock. Uh, I do that mainly for the benefits that come from that heightened awareness, um, which is hard to achieve within that adrenaline. And so even though those are really uncomfortable for me to do, I've continued to do them over the years so that now I'm very uh, calm and collected during those moments. I'm really into Zen and meditation, but my kind of meditation is not just like where you sit and, and ohm kind of thing. It's, it's in anything you're doing and you're being so involved in what you're doing that it just kind of takes over. And so like, for example, when I was doing my one arm handstand work, a lot of that was I just had to freaking stay up there and so you kind of have to clear the mind and so it really reminds me of what you're just saying when you're going through the course because it's that heightened awareness and you can only get that when you're under pressure and so it reminds me of like competition when I was competing in judo over here all the time too you know when you're on the mat and you're practicing everything's fine but when you step on the mat there's hundreds and hundreds of people watching you and you, and you have to step to perform 
you got to change. And the only way to do that is actually putting yourself in that situation. So what you're saying about parkour, it really doesn't matter the level that you're working at. It's, it's the environment, like what you said, Ryan, and also Amos, and putting yourself in this situation where you're challenging yourself. But you do have the wherewithal and the safety net of knowing that you can't accomplish these these skills. So it's not like you're just jumping into these, right? I mean, yeah. right, exactly, yeah. trained to be able to do them. And so I think, unfortunately, we see so many people watch these videos and just think that you're just doing them. It just, oh yeah, let's just try and jump over this bridge and you know do all this kind of stuff. So kind of veering off into a different direction, but if you can kind of let me know and let us know, how do you train for these kind of things? And so, because I think a lot of people have a misperception of how you train, and I'm not just talking about conditioning, I'm talking about how you approach a certain, a certain course or a certain way of training um, a skill. Yeah, for sure. Uh, something that I found interesting reading um, people that don't know parkour that well, stuff they've either written or said about parkour, is that often, even if we are executing something to perfection with the most clean landing ever, often superimposed over that is all of their fears and then they imagine all the things that can go wrong. So even though you might see someone with so much control running a course, you'll still have a ton of people just be like, wouldn't want to see the bales reel, or like, oh, if that guy missed by an inch, he'd be done. And something that I hope more people understand is that we actually have a very wide range of possible outcomes that we can deal with. And this comes from uh, training what we call landing continuums. So for instance, uh, if I would have jumped for that beam you saw in the video and I didn't get quite the distance I wanted or not quite the height, there are a certain set of reactions where I can adapt in the air and then react to keep myself safe. It might not be the most, uh, the best outcome for me for the course, but at least for safety. Um, and then the same thing goes for falling continuums. I also have an entire um, study that goes into how to adapt once the fall takes place. So if you can adapt to all the outcomes of overshooting, undershooting, and then you can adapt with all the falls to slipping or things moving when you didn't expect them to, et cetera. Um, that's what allows us this massive range of possibilities where sometimes when, when we train, it's not fearful at all. It's actually play. And the reason it can be play is because we can mess around. We can throw flips we know we don't have. And it's not like we're just throwing ourselves through a window and doing a flip. We know that we can under rotate a little bit or over rotate a little bit and we can have a good laugh afterwards. So a lot of my training has to do with adaptability and linking all these techniques together, um, whether it's falling or adaptations. And I think that's what keeps a lot of us really safe. Yeah. Yes. No, in, addition, no, in addition to that, I was just thinking about how I think in parkour, there's something that's so inherently like human and familiar about it, but at the same time, it's also extremely foreign to people. And what I mean is like in skateboarding or BMX or something, you have wheels and you have equipment. And so when people watch those highlight videos, they're like, oh, like I've, I've never done that. I can't relate to that. That's cool. But, you know, it's, it's a little different when you're just walking down an alleyway and you think back to that parkour video you saw and you're standing in an alleyway looking up at the buildings and imagining using your own body, like everything you have with you at that moment and could you jump that? And I think a lot of people are like, no way. Like, I could never do that. Nah. But, you know, it's just, it's familiar and foreign at the same time. And I think what Amos was kind of saying is people think what we do is insane and dangerous because they're overlooking all of the practice and all of the groundwork and all of the drills and fall preparation and anal analyzing every possible outcome. They're overlooking all that because, you know, you just don't really see that on YouTube. Yeah, I think that's really important. And it, it goes with a lot of the things that we teach and uh, also in, in other disciplines, martial arts, dance or whatever, too. People tend to look at the end result, right? And uh, they, they either are afraid of it or they want to achieve it and either over or underestimate sometimes what goes into it. But... In, in any respect, what they're not looking at is all the preparation and all of the all of the different variations and scenarios and, you know, all the different ways that you've done it just a little differently so that you can perform that skill that way that time, you know? It's not just practicing one thing that's static. It's practicing a, a movement that, that's living, you know, that's adjusting to, you know, the moment with you. And the way that you get that is not by just like knowing how to do it and popping up and doing it. It's by practicing around that skill like hundreds and hundreds of times. 
you know? So I think that that's really cool that you guys uh, that you guys show show that process also in your videos a lot. Yeah, and on top of that, it's also kind of like a sliding scale. Like in every <clears throat> movement or discipline, you've got the super basic stuff and this huge scale leading up to the crazy like highlight viral videos you see on YouTube. Mm -hmm. And in parkour, I think it even takes that to the next level because there is no end. Like you could always find a bigger jump or you could always do it a little bit faster. So we're always striving to this impossible level of perfection. Like you could never be a master at parkour, I guess. So that's kind of what we want to install in other people is it doesn't matter again if you're doing backflips or if you're just learning how to step up onto a bench. Like it's all movement, it's all expanding on your own capability and in a way that's all parkour. So. Yeah, it feels weird to actually give it a name. Like I think Ryan said this earlier because it's such a continuum into everything I do, whether it's dance, play, defending myself, um, all these different things, and, and even into, uh, like a, uh, Supreme Beef was saying, um, I, don't, I don't actually enjoy sitting meditation, but I spend a lot of time uh, balancing for meditation or doing moving meditations um, with, with parkour movements. So it's really just one big continuum for me, so it feels weird to even call it something to give it a name. Um, yeah, I think that's a huge theme. You know, it's funny because we actually – <laughs> something in GMB right now that we struggle with is is people want to know what we do you know it's it's we got to put a name on it and it's so tough and, and it's listening to you guys it's I just got to go yeah exactly it's it's there's no name for it you just do unfortunate we all we all need labels we all right? need labels um, let me ask you guys so obviously we've talked about kind of like the the higher end of things and as you guys just said there's definitely a whole continuum from very beginner up to like you know infinite possibilities but what about someone who is just not even remotely interested in some of the higher level things obviously uh, you guys think this and I um, Bifo and I <laughs> both agree um, <laughs> that you know Anyone can get the benefit out of practicing just about any number of things, right? So someone who maybe doesn't have like, you know, ninja warrior aspirations, what is, what kind of, how can they benefit from, even if not taking a formal parkour class, but the, the, the lessons of parkour, so to speak? I, I think you could almost write an entire book just for that level on, right. on the benefits, really, because... It do, it, to, do it, do it, do it! I mean, it, whether you like it or not... Everyone that's listening right now is going to fall again in their life. And whether it's on ice or maybe you get hit by a train, whatever, um, that's going to happen. And then also, if you don't want to look really goofy walking all the way around a 30-foot rail, maybe you have to get over things here and there. Um, also, your mental health is very related to, to exercise and movement. If you don't want to be bored in a gym just pumping weights, um, then maybe you want to have like this very movement oriented exercise regime in so many ways just the basic approach to parkour makes its way into your life whether it's ad adapting to life being strong having good mental health uh, also even just the way you approach problems um, you can even learn spiritual lessons from parkour so I could not even begin to answer your question because in so many ways it penetrates your life so yeah, I, I would say that probably the most beneficial things you get out of parkour are actually not even physical. It, it mostly goes down to mental. It's facing your fears. It's solving a problem. It's being creative. It's changing your perspective. And when you practice all of these things and you do a little bit of that every single day, I think everything else in life becomes easier as well. So it's, it's almost like we're preparing ourselves to be really uncomfortable and to be constantly scared and stuff so that when we actually are involuntarily, we're prepared for that. And so in that sense, I think parkour is a very easy thing to understand metaphorically for people. You overcome obstacles physically, but also in life. So, yeah. so then how, how could somebody just begin to try to experience some of that? What's the easiest, simplest way for someone to try to get into it? You know, is there something that they need to practice? Or I mean, obviously, practice is, is the key to getting the benefits, right? So where should one's practice really start out? I think uh, it really de depends on the person um, and their goals because um, I've done a fair amount of traveling as well, and I've been able to train with a lot of different communities around the world. Um, Osaka actually has a really cool community that I got to spend some time with. 
took forever to find them because it was at we trained at the castle. Yeah, the yeah, Osaka Castle. That's right. Yeah, I'm all over that place for like thirty minutes. It's so big, I, yeah. and I finally found the group. But uh, a lot, a lot of these uh, different communities have shown me that you don't need fancy equipment or a really nice gym. Even it kind of just depends on what you're going after um, and what you have access to, and you cater your startup to that. So. Um, that could mean just trying to find information online or find someone locally that's uh, really experienced and starting out with really basic movements like landings and basic conditioning. Or if you were close to a parkour gym and you have access to that, you can definitely have a very safe experience with various pads and experts that teach there. So I think the biggest thing that I say, there's just so many ways to enter it. It can even be an entire experience of self-discovery because you're isolated, you're on an island somewhere. That's still completely fine, but the biggest thing I tell people is don't watch YouTube videos and then just go jump off your roof. That's, that's the kind of direction that just gets you hurt. <coughs> you have to live his life for the first two years. That's what you're doing. He was on the dial-up modem, dial -up. Yeah, before YouTube existed 11 years ago. And he was just watching that stuff and trying it. And luckily, he had to take all the hits. The second generation got to learn from that. So if anything, try to find um, someone you can learn from, but otherwise take it really slow if you don't have access to that. Um, one thing we're actually working on right now, and I know you guys can understand this, you do something similar, is over the years, uh, Ryan and I have had tons of requests just flooding us on a regular basis of people who aren't close to a gym that want our advice. They want to sh send videos of their techniques and ask for um, ways to improve. Um, they want to know where to start. And so we realized that could be just such a good win-win situation if we got our act together and created an organization that reached those people so that even if they don't have a professional or a gym, they can still know how to start in a basic way and safely progress. Um, that along with our certification and some other stuff that we want to do for Paul Parkour, we're going to be uh, housing all under Parkour EDU. Very cool. Well, thank you guys. This has been really, really good. I've wanted to... Uh to do something more about parkour uh, with our audience and introduce it because it's it's something that I've enjoyed when I was able to practice it for a little bit and uh, um, that I'm, I'm not to the level where I can really claim to have any expertise or be able to explain it to someone who doesn't do it, right? So really glad to be able to share that and thank you guys for, for coming and uh, uh, being being somewhat counter to probably what a lot of the uh, the stereotype might be, and being able to actually explain it very well, so I appreciate that. And, and thank you guys. Actually, um, we don't isolate ourselves in the parkour community. A lot of what we do is we seek all other disciplines, <clears throat> arts um, for movement, and we take what we can from that. So, you know, like I said, I do regular dance classes, and I actually learn a lot there, and I bring it into parkour. Um, Ryan is constantly reading your guys' stuff, and a lot of other people, um, their videos and articles, and we take all that, and we're very scientific about boiling it down for our own approach. So thank you guys for putting out the stuff you put out. You actually help the parkour community, whether you knew that or not. Yeah, actually, I just sent one of my teammates your wrist conditioning video because sweet, it's some inflexible wrist that he needs uh, to work on. But cool, man. Yeah, thank you guys for putting out those resources. And like you said, we're always trying to collaborate with different movement arts, and that's what it comes down to. I mean, they're all so related. So yeah, Hell yeah, yeah. Hell yeah. We're we're very much the same in that we don't really believe in isolating things or trying to copyright a series of movements or any kind of that kind of crap, Tra you know? Trademark. Like, <laughs> Trademark. <laughs> cool. Well, okay. thanks again, and uh, definitely uh, we will we'll talk more. Uh, Ryan, do you have anything else you – or I'm sorry, uh, Beef, do you have anything else? Nah, man. I'm just getting ready to go jump off the roof of my building here, you know? <laughs> I'm just so pumped right now. So. But you guys understood exactly what we were trying to say. Huh? <laughs> exactly. <laughs> right. I totally got, got it. basically learned totally something. Totally got it, yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys. It was a pleasure. We're going to make a tutorial on how to jump off your rooftop. I like and it. Sounds great. We're going to start. <laughs> thanks again, guys. All right, guys. Thanks a lot. Thanks. For more great info, join us over at gmb.io. And be sure to check us out on iTunes and YouTube.